Sword to tactical command. We are inbound on final approach. I say again, inbound on final. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the great New York State Fair. We are the Special Operations Response Team, and this is your repellent demonstration for the day. If you look at the tower midway up on the roof line, we have your host with the most, Eric Ozzy Osborne. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day four of the Great New York State Fair. We are sort for this attack development for the New York State Police. As such, we conduct all those operations you would expect a SWAT team to conduct. High-risk felony warrants, drug raids, barricaded subjects, hostage situations, dignitary protection. However, we also perform a few tasks you wouldn't necessarily associate with a SWAT team such as search and rescue, specifically high angle repelling and rope rescue, which is what we're going to demonstrate here today. Our team was formed back in 1979 in anticipation of the 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid. Hosting the Olympics is obviously a great honor, however it was also an awesome responsibility. The 1972 Munich terrorist attacks weighed heavily on everyone's mind. So the state police took some firearms instructors, most of whom were veterans, sent them off to the FBI to be trained in counterterrorism tactics. They were called the Mobile Response Team. Since then, our team has undergone several evolutions. In 2008, we changed our name to SORT and became a full-time detail. Our guys no longer work the road. We have five different teams spread out across the state. Each one of those regional teams is responsible for maintaining their own equipment all the way from the large pieces of equipment like that Lenco Bearcat, the big armored vehicle in the grass over there, all the way down to our individual climbing harnesses. On the front of each guy's harness, you're gonna see a piece of equipment. This is called the figure eight. This is how we control our descent. The rope is fed through that. That top hand on the rope is just a guide hand, keeps us upright. The one back here down by our hip, that's the money maker, that's the brake hand. As we move that away from our body, it allows the rope to freely flow through that device. Once we put it back to our hip, it puts friction on that device, slowing and eventually stopping us. But telling you is one thing, showing you something different. So without further ado, let's bring the guys down and introduce them. Up on the left side of the tower with the golden green sage, from North Central Trooper Chris, the situation sweatpants. Central's assistant team leader, Sergeant Cole Polio Sheevat! In that top window spinning on beach, fresh off his European tour, where he played clubs from the line to miss. Your favorite DJ, Trooper! Emma! On the left side of the tower, from the south 
special team, Benjamin Big Ben Manwaring. And on the right side of the tower from the North Central team, Trooper Luke Daddy Diamondwood. Daddy, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, stop. Sorry about that, folks. Donnie, sorry, man, I totally forgot to mention before the show. You're going to be a uh, crest, a test subject, a volunteer for this next segment. Who volunteered? Oh, uh, yeah, you've been voluntold. So as of right now, you're the last guy I forgot about it, you're volunteer. All right, folks, like I said, when we're coming down, we use that break hand. However, as the fair progresses, our guys like to entertain themselves. They get that hand a little further out than they should, maybe a little wider open than they should, and they really let her eat. However, if you're doing that, you're gonna notice this rope's gonna develop some loops and twists. When those loops or twists hits your palm, that rope can pop out of your hand. You lose your brakes on the throughway, that's a bad day on the road, right? We lose our brakes up there, that's a bad day on the ropes. But that's what leads me to my man, Sergeant Sheebat. Cole's not trying to be rude or antisocial, showing his bat. He's not trying to showcase his well-defined lats and traps. They hit the, hit the infirmary, brother, get a band-aid, because you are cut. Cut. Does this thing happen? It's a new mic, they're not here. As our, senior guy, as our senior guy and ropes guru out here, he has the oh-so-important yet not-at-all-glamorous job of rope safety or belayment. If one of those guys coming down loses their break hand, Cole's going to pull on that rope, putting friction on their eight, slowing, and hopefully stopping them. But again, I'm telling you is one thing showing you something different. So Luke's gonna help us out. He's gonna take a couple steps back, he's gonna get a running start, and he's gonna throw himself off of that roof with no hands on the rope. He's gonna fly and squirrel it, hurtling towards Earth at an incredible rate of speed, accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second until the very last moment. Sergeant Shebat, if he is physically able and so inclined, will use his raw power and cat-like reflexes to engage a belay, stopping Luke mere moments from certain death or at least a sprained ankle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you paid for your whole seat. You're only gonna need the edge. This part's gonna be awesome. Luke, are you ready? I don't think so. <laughs> you don't think so? Dude, I just built it up pretty good. Come on, you gotta come down one. You gotta come down anyway, man. No, it's not a ladder shell. It's a rope shell. No, I, I understand how it works. Come on, man. He's pretty good. He's gotten better at belaying you 60% of the time. It works every time. What do you say, Donnie? He doesn't even care. Look at him. He's walking around. What do you mean? What? Oh, yeah, that's, that's not cold, is it? All right, hold on to a second. I'm sorry. I apologize. Hey, buddy, how are you? What's your name? What is it? Kobe? Kobe. Kobe, did he tell you what to do? Maybe. Kobe. All right, Kobe, I'll tell you what to do. I'll give you the master class real quick right there. Right? He's going to jump, and you just pull on the rope. Okay? He jumps, you pull on the rope. No big deal, whatever. First bounce, second bounce. No big deal. At some point, he's going to stop falling. Everybody falls and stops falling eventually. What do you think? Kobe's locked in, brother. He looks quick and strong. I think it's 50 generation. Not a fan! Right. Hey, Cole, want to do me a favor? Just have a little powwow here. I'm sorry, folks. I know dead air is just awful for entertainment. If this even qualifies. Yeah, one of those Hey, if he burns it, Kobe's hands are on there? Yeah. No, no, it's not. Like, our fair days are over. Yeah. No more Kelly's tenders. No more sausage sandwiches. It's back in that lab and crack house. We got ten more days of this. Nine more. I'm bad at that. You know what? <laughs> Let's not go back now, okay? We can't cuddle goats. I can't have any more disappointment. The cuddle goat cuddling's gone. I can't get sent back early. We do me a solid. Just do your job this time. Teamwork. Teamwork. You and Kobe do it together. Together there'll be a team, okay? What do you think? Right? 730. Just like the grip. Come on, man. You ready? No, come on. There's going to be two of them. Cole and Kobe. And see, like the music factory. You ready? Come on, come on, folks. Let's give them a little bit of encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. Music pumping. Folks, help me count him down from three. Ready? Three, two, one. Woo! Oh, he's in there. Very nice. And now we can show his success. We can 
keep them up there all day, or we can just drastically drop them at any moment. <laughs> just like that. Very nice. Let's hear it for our away, Kobe. Don't worry about it. Hey, Kobe, for helping us out, making sure our guy didn't burn in, there is one trooper there, courtesy of the Trooper Foundation, available for sale over there, along with these pretty sweet shirts. Let's hear it for our belay, guys. All right, folks, you can see how it's real easy to end up in a precarious predicament up there. Gravity does not take an instant off. But if you end up in a bad spot or an uncomfortable position, as long as you keep your head, as long as you keep your cool, and most importantly, as long as you keep your brake hand, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. So if you look up top, we've got Chris and Brandon who are going to come on down. All right, you saw them come down silky smooth in that same standard seated hip propel that everyone else has used. But now they're going to transition their brake hand from their right to their left. That's going to allow them to go ahead and invert it. So now, even though they're upside down, as long as they maintain that newfound brake hand, they're not going to smash face first in this beautifully manicured turf. This is what we call the commando crawl. It allows our guys to see where they're going before they present their feet or other body parts to a window. But once they've gone far enough and seen all they feel they need to see, they go ahead and revert. Reassume that brake hand and come on down. Complete with a superhero landing, ladies and gentlemen, the invert. As a side note, we did recruit these guys, the team, directly from a synchronized swimming academy. You see all those hours in the pool, it really paid off. For it's quite the bond. Nailed it, guys. Beautiful. That's very good. You're, you're improving. Very good. You're going to notice an overarching theme out here today, folks, and that's going to be safety. We're dealing with heights. We're dealing with extreme angles. We're dealing with hard and sharp edges. It's all inherently dangerous. If someone is rappelling, rock climbing, or even hiking, they could end up stranded in a position where they can go neither up nor down. We have to have the means to get to those people and rescue them. Ladders aren't necessarily going to reach high enough, and helicopters can be counterproductive. Those rotors don't do our ropes any favors, if you know what I'm saying. So if you look up top, we've got Luke, who's going to start our demonstration. Come on down. Say Luke's working his way down a sheer cliff face in the Adirondack State Park, or perhaps Ithaca, because it is gorgeous. He gets himself to a spot he wants to be for a while. He's going to take that rope and wrap it around his eight. Not once, not twice, but thrice. This is called the tie-off. Once Luke's tied off, he can go hands-free. He can literally and figuratively hang out. He can get his cell phone out, snap a selfie, post it to his MySpace page. Anybody else still run a MySpace? Don't explain my lack of traffic. Find me, bro. But say he's hanging out up there and a rock kicks loose, hits him in the head. <laughs> right on cue. But we don't have any OSHA compliant rocks out here, so I'm going to need a couple volunteers from the audience. No? Yeah, come on forward. Don't worry about raising your hand, guys. We're not that organized. All right, see the rope that's here for your safety? Ignore that. Walk right past it, okay? So grab yourself a water balloon. All right, you're going to close with and destroy. Get as close to him as possible. I'm like 70% sure that's good now. We're going to run out of water balloons. When we do, please don't cry. Brace my heart. Brace my lips quiver. I hate it. This should be it, guys. We should have enough right here. Grab him. Get right up there, guys. Get right up there. Oh, that's very sweet. There you go. Fill it right up. That'll do it. That'll do it. Go get him. Thanks for coming up, guys. He's getting us a little away. It's a barrage. A virtual avalanche. All right, let's hear it for our rocks. Great job. Oh, nice effort. Much more orderly than the last crowd. We almost had to deploy tear gas at the last show. Got a little wild. All right, but now Donnie's been knocked unconscious. We can't leave him there. We got a lot of time and money invested in him. As a matter of fact, he did just finish our six-month sword school two short months ago. Quite the accomplishment. He did a great job. So while he's sitting there, we can't leave him stranded. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Big Ben. Ben's going to work his way down his line. He's going to latch hands on Luke, and he's going to hopefully bring them both down to safety. Come on down, Ben. Oh, okay. 
We choose our own music out here, bold selection for men, obviously very comfortable as all skin. What's the matter, Ben? That is your song, isn't it? Oh, the poet, I thought it fit the mood. Does it not? Oh, DJ Rad Chad. Our tax team is not going to come down to this. He needs his song. He needs something manly. You got him? Rad Chad got him. Hold on. He loves the weather girl. All of this song. As Ben L. Zhao comes over the side, did you notice she has a different team of equipment on this one as far as Ben is no longer wanting an ache, he's wanting what's called a break ball ride. That's going to allow Ben to take additional weight onto his system. That additional weight in this case is going to be Luke. So Luke's all set up. Ben gets stop, stop a little above him, but before he does anything, he's got to perform a tie off. Unless he falls around and he comes by another rhythm and he can rescue him. Once he's tied off, Ben will reach for that blue strap on his left hip. That's a pick-off strap designed specifically for the old rescue application. He'll then use a partial inversion on the wingspan of a condor to hook it to Luke's harness. Once hooked and locked in, Ben will use that pick-off strap and his bulging biceps that he somehow shoehorns into an extra medium t-shirt. Supply chain issues, that's why you gotta go to the kids section. As Ben pulls up Luke, you see how Luke instinctively reaches for his hips and legs. We're a very close knit team. At this point, we ask no photos to take it. Thank you. You notice how Luke's line is becoming all slack. That's an indication that Ben has removed Luke's weight from that system. Now Ben's securing all of Luke's hardware, and he'll work to totally free him from his line. Now Ben will undo his tie off and hopefully lower them both safely to the ground. It looks like he nailed it. Ladies and gentlemen, the pick off. All right, we've gone over basic repelling. We've shown you safety measures we have in place. We have gone over a very small percentage of the rescue work that we are capable of. However, there is also a tactical application to the rope work we are demonstrating here today. Say, for example, there's a bad guy creeping around these fairgrounds, snatches up a kid, runs up in that building and barricades the door shut. Horrible choice of location on his part, but I digress. He's got that door nailed shut, got the fridge right up against it, and he feels real confident we're not going to be able to breach that door. Unfortunately for that bad guy, the special operations response team doesn't need to come in through the window. Through the door, we come in through the window. Spoiler. But before we do, we count on all our partners in law enforcement. All the men and women you see walking around these fairgrounds with the gray uniforms and the Stetsons, those are the road troopers. That is the most important and dangerous job in the Division of State Police. They are the first responders showing up at these chaotic scenes oftentimes by themselves, locking them down, getting people to safety. Then come their supervisors, investigators, negotiators, and all our partners in special operations to include aviation, drone pilots, and our partners in the K-9 unit. When it comes to this, these types of operations, we all have to work in concert as a team. But once all those pieces are in place, we're ready to do our job. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Chris, who's ready to run the recon. Chris is careful to land very gently on that roof so as not to notify anyone of his presence. He works in a commando crawl and starts checking those windows for our suspect and hostage state. Nothing there. Whoa! That is not a hard target. You start with that. Uh-oh, they have to change their heart. They're getting handsy. Chris, get out of there. Swipe left. As Chris works his way down, now that he's out of the real danger, he gets eyes on that lower window and he's confirming that, in fact, our suspect and hostage are in there. Now he reaches up on his harness for that canister to noise flash diversion device, commonly referred to as a flashback. That's going to be a bright light and loud noise. 
that distracts and disorients the suspect while we seize the initial. It looks like Chris is ready with a bang, and it looks like we're ready for Brandon to effect the rescue. Brandon's in the window, trying to find the bad guy. Watch out, he's got a knife. Disarm him, old tiny boxing match. Uh oh, Brandon's in trouble. Got him with a guillotine. Here comes the. Oh, nice reversal into a trap. Yeah, all right, get him away, Brandon. Get him back here. Get him in there. Come on, Brandon, let's get this guy into custody. Oh, 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 against the inanimate object. How's Timmy doing, Brandon? Timmy, the kid, the reason you went in there? Okay. Timmy's okay. Another save for Brandon Strader. Let's hear it for Brandon. He's a real hero. Just ask him. Folks, hopefully you guys have had a great time coming out here. Enjoy hanging out with us. We definitely enjoy it. We love coming out here, working on this awesome tower, interacting with you good people. It represents a real nice break for all of us. However, at the end of the day, it is a serious business we're involved in. If you look along that roof line, we've got four sets of numbers. Those are the shield numbers of Michael Strank, Ross Riley, David Brinkerhoff, and Joseph Long Lombardo. Those four men were operators on our team who died in the line of duty. They made the ultimate sacrifice serving the people of the state of New York, and we think it's those guys that deserve a real round of applause. You've been a great crowd. We really appreciate you coming out. Feel free to come forward after the show, right up to the rope line. We'll answer questions, post for pictures, tasteful, of course. We've got stickers for the kids. The museum is open and interesting. You've got interactive displays back there. And make sure to hit the Trooper Foundation for all your state police swag. Thanks for coming out, folks, and enjoy the rest of your day at the great New York State Fair.